Hey guys, and welcome back to a new video. AI for developers is slowly getting out of control, especially for us Android developers, because a big new announcement from Google is the new so-called Studio Bot, and that is basically ChatGPT integrated into Android Studio directly. And the claim of this new Studio Bot AI compared to other chat AIs like ChatGPT and Bard is that this new bot is specialized on native Android development. And in this video, I will try it out to find out how much better it is than ChatGPT or if it is better at all, what kind of problems it might have at the moment, and what the vision of these AIs is that are directly integrated in our IDEs. This video will be structured in two major parts. On the one hand, I will go through different testing questions. So questions I will ask the AI and evaluate how good is the answer that it gives us. And that from very easy question to harder question. And then in the last part, I will talk about the vision and feedback. So is there something the AI can do at the moment where I see a big potential in future? And if this is actually something you should use instead of an AI like ChatGPT? Right away, this is in a really early stage and it is only included in the Canary build of Android Studio in Android Studio Hedgehog, which you can download here. And that is not enough. It's currently only available for US people. And Google actually does some geo-blocking here, so you have to be in the US or use a VPN like I do. So let's jump into Android Studio. This is the Canary version. And first of all, see where we can find this new tool. This new tool is located a little bit hidden here in this uh, extra options menu and clicking on Studio Bot. And then this will open. You might need to log in with a Google account first. I changed my location of my Google account to the US. I'm not sure if you need to do that, but that is just an additional thing. I thought maybe I need that. But the most important thing is that you are actually accessing this from the US. So either by being in the US or using a VPN. And here we now have a very simple chat window comparable to ChatGPT. And we can ask this any Android related questions and get an answer in seconds. Right away, I will use this completely unbiased. I tried this tool out with two to three very basic questions to see how it works, but I haven't asked it any more advanced questions. So you will really get my full reaction here. And I want to start with a very basic question first and then raise the level of difficulty throughout these questions. And the first question is that it simply explains what an extension function is in Kotlin. So you could see what is an extension function in Kotlin? How can I write one? Let's submit that and see what the bot actually spits out here. And you can see it's a very comparable answer to ChatGPT. It spits out formatted code. And here it just explains extension function Kotlin is a function that can be added to a class, blah, blah, blah. So that is probably correct. I won't read that in detail now, but it spits out an example for an extension function of a string to capitalize a string. And it takes the substring, so the first character here, converts that to uppercase, and then adds the substring, so basically what comes after that. It's a little bit weird way of capitalizing a string in my opinion, but it works. Alternatively, it spits out an extension function of a list of integers, where we simply get the sum of all the values inside of that list. But let's find out if this tool can also help us with a little bit more complicated logic. So question number two is, I want algorithm which takes in a string in form of a full name, for example, Philip Lechner, and the function that I want the studio bot to generate for me should simply give me the initials of that full name. So if I enter Philip Lackner, it should spit out PL. But the same way, if I enter a name with three names, so with a middle name, it should spit out the first character of the first name and the first character of the last name, ignoring the middle name. And these are basically just the requirements I put in here. Sadly, um, the window for the chat is very small and it seems like I can increase that. But I want a function which takes the full name string and generates the initials from it. These are the rules. So Philip Blackner should give me PL, first, middle, last should give me FL and not FML. If I just input Philip, it should give me PH. And if I input an empty string, it should give me an empty string back. So pretty straightforward requirements. I'm sure ChatGPT with GPT-4 would not have any problems generating the code for that. Let's try out what the studio board tells us here. There we go. It gives us a function get initials from a full name that is correct so far. If the full name is empty, it returns an empty string. Impressive, impressive. Um, it splits the words based on the spaces, which is yeah, which just gives us a list of each word, and then it maps these to the first character to uppercase and joins these together. That's not correct. So it effectively completely ignored our requirements number two and three, because there is no rule here that would ignore the middle names and only consider the first and the last name. And also if I just input a single name, 
this would simply spit out the initial character of that single string and not the first two characters. So let's please ask it to correct that. Um, please also consider requirements two and three. Let's see if it is smart enough to now consider that. So yes, it changed something. Let's see now. Now it actually extended the code by checking if the length of a word is larger than one. Only then it capitalizes that and else it leaves it as it is. I'm pretty sure this doesn't solve our problem. Um, it tells us that for this input, this, our function should actually print out fl. I would say we try this out. And the cool thing about the Studio Bot is that we can directly put our cursor somewhere in our code and then click this button to insert the code at the cursor. You can see there are no issues. <laughs> it is actually using deprecated functions. Um, but what else would we expect from a Studio Bot? Let's also go up here on create and actually add this piece of code to test this. Maybe also put something like initials and then print the initials. I want to launch this on my device and uh, let's take a look here in Lockhead if this is actually printing our FL initials as the claim is by our studio bot, as you can see. So my app is running, need to go back to Lockhead and find this. It is printing FML and that is also what I thought. So it basically lied to us. And also the same way if I just have Philip here, I'm pretty sure this won't work and spit out pH because there is no code in here which would consider that. So lock at, scroll up, and it just prints out p, which is not based on the on the uh, requirements. So till now, this Studio Bot only passed the very first basic test by explaining what an extension function is but not the test about a bit more complicated logic. So my next question here is something Android specific now, because till now it was purely Kotlin related. Let's see how good it actually is with Android questions. And I want it to build a UI component for a profile. So I want to have an image, an async image, which is a round profile picture, which is loaded from a URL. Usually in Jetpack Compose, we need a library for that, which is coiled, or that at least is the, the normal way how we do this. So we can also check if it is able to uh, give us the dependency for coil and then i told it hey below that we have a name for the profile and a description and everything should be centered so something which is kind of basic but still i think it would save us a bit of code if it was able to generate the code for that let's try and hit enter and see what our dear studio bot ai spits out here verified response whatever that means i have no idea so it just uh mentions what jetpack compose is okay and it spit out a very short answer sure here's the code for profile ui component in Jetpack Compose that has round profile picture, blah, 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 blocked. It, it just tells us <laughs> that that section is blocked. I don't know why, StudioBot. I could imagine that this is kind of a security mechanism of Google or of the AI, because in the past I've seen people try to hack ChatGPT to spit out or, or to talk about things it usually wouldn't talk about. And one of these hacks was sometimes to just make ChatGPT treat the answer as code and then it didn't properly validate that. And maybe this bot is doing something similar and rather blocks this whole code block if it thinks the answer might not be appropriate, which is very weird because it's just a Jetpack Compose UI component, which I would call Android related. And it also tells us this code will create a profile UI component that, that looks like this. Ah, here, here we should have an image, but there is no image. I don't know if, if they plan to extend that or if it should already work, but this answer is not helpful at all. And a part of that, it also did not even tell us how we load the image asynchronously from a URL, for example, using coil. So I'm very sorry, dear Studio Bot, but you also failed test number three. But what about test number four? And that is, I want to implement the very basic room database. So my next question is, show me how I can create a room database that saves notes. And each note simply consists of an ID, a title, and a description. And I want to know how I can use that in a view model with a CRUD functionality. So um, creating nodes, updating nodes, deleting nodes, all that basic stuff we need with databases. So let's see if it is at least able to tell me what a Google related dependency is because the room library is from Google. Let's hit enter and uh, see what it spits out. It is loading and what did it do here? Um, let's scroll up. So first of all, it created a node class. There is no entity annotation at all, which we would need for a room related entity. So this is missing. The node DAO also does not have an annotation for a DAO. The rest of it 
is also missing all these annotations we we use with Room. It just creates the DB in a plain Kotlin file, which I would not do. Okay, then it gets the DAO from the DB. It gets all nodes also in a plain Kotlin file. Um, okay, it seems like it's just describing how we can use this. Um, let's see if it also told us uh, how to how to use this in a view model. Well, yes, partly. Um, so we use the node DAO here. This is very, very basic. Um, so it also didn't tell us the dependency for room at all. I have no idea where I can get that from if I would be new to that. And also I would have no idea how I actually create this view model instance because if we pass parameters to a view model, we can't just do it like this. We need a view model factory. And ChatGPT would have explained that for sure while our dear studio bot did not. Maybe I can ask for it. How can I create the um, node DAO in the view model? Let's uh, test how, how good it actually is if I ask follow-up questions. It's loading. Um, and well, it spit out something Okay, it actually just created a global instance of our node view model. So don't create a view model like this in your project. You want to bind this to some kind of life cycle, like to your activity, a fragment, or uh, to a nav graph. You don't want to just have a global instance of this because then you don't need a view model at all. Well, this is totally against the purpose of a view model. Okay, I'm very sorry, but StudioBot, you also failed our test number four. And I have an optional fifth one, which I'm pretty sure it it won't give us good answers for, but let's just for the sake of entertainment um, ask that. And that is something very specific with up, where it needs up-to-date information, how we can create a home screen widget in Jetpack Compose, because that requires a library, which is, uh, yeah, which is only in alpha right now. So this would be an advantage over ChatGPT if this actually has information about up-to-date practices in Android. So let's try that out. Just a very basic request, show me how I can uh, create a home screen widget in Compose and it should display the current time, something like that. Let's see if it actually gives us something. I'm pretty sure it won't give us a, a working solution here. And for some reason, it again has three blocked sections here. I don't know why it blocks so much, but this is actually quite disappointing at the moment. But of course, it's still a preview build and a still canary version. There will come more improvements to this. Okay, so coming to the last part, what about my vision and the feedback for these bots? Do I see a future in such bots that are directly integrated in our IDE or should we just stick to ChatGPT? So I think in this case, it's pretty obvious that uh, this bot is not helpful at all. Maybe if you're completely starting out in Android and you want to know things like what is an extension function and, and these kinds of things, it might help a little bit, but then I would just ask ChatGPT. It gives you way better answers at this moment. So while this is currently just the worst version of ChatGPT, I see a really big potential in this. And I personally would even go as far that I say this will revolutionize the way we code. And not necessarily in the sense that we can ask any question and that we can ask for code examples. That is something we can also ask ChatGPT. But I think the true power of these bots lies in that these are directly integrated in our IDE. So instead of something we can just type in our coding questions, I see this as a real assistant who works with us, who is an expert in Android Studio. So imagine it can actually directly access our real code and also, for example, show us specific steps, how we can refactor that, maybe nicely visualized. I think that would be great. Well, let's imagine a different scenario and move away from code. What if we could use this in combination with other Android Studio functionalities, such as we're trying to find a specific setting and toggle that to on, but we don't know how that setting is phrased and we can't find it in our settings. Then we could simply ask our studio bot and it will toggle that for us. Or if you want to simply quickly commit your code and push it to GitHub and let the studio bot just generate meaningful commit messages based on the changes you did, then that would also be very helpful. Or imagine you have a file in your code and you need meaningful documentation for it and you could just generate and insert that with a single click using studio bot or the same with test cases. You have a function and you just want to click one single button and that generates meaningful test cases that test actual behavior. Or you want to set up your initial project and let's say that is a multi-module setup. So you need to set up a bunch of modules, lots of Gradle code, and you could simply describe your initial project skeleton and the studio bot would do all that for you. So it would create all the modules, set up all the Gradle files and also add all your dependencies. So it would look these up for you and the most up-to-date version, which we 
only need to do manually by searching in countless GitHub repos. So we could simply say, hey, I need retrofit, I need coil, I need room, and it would research these dependencies and include the most up-to-date version in our project. That would be amazing. Or I think the absolutely coolest thing would be if we could use it to generate a very custom theme based on our favorite colors where the colors actually harmonate and look well with each other. So as you can see, there's a lot of potential in these bots and I actually see these to be used in every major IDE in the next years. So right now the Studio bot is just trash. We have to be honest about that, but don't see this as a failure of Google or so. It's actually intended to be used in a very early stage by just putting that in uh, the, the canary build. So now Google can get feedback, maybe also from this video, I don't know, and work on that and improve that for the future releases until it's stable. So if you say, you rather not rely on the, the studio bot right now and you want to learn the real end of development and more advanced topics which you need in the industry then check the first link in this video's description to find out about my advanced premium courses and apart from that i wish you an amazing rest of your week i will see you back in the next video bye bye